Welcome to the Hollywood Scholar, I'm Jed Morgan, and there's been a lot of news coming out of Netflix's The Witcher Writer's Room, and it seems like we have another additional piece of the puzzle to that whole situation that supposedly shines a light on the relationship between Henry Cavill and the writers. Now, they just need to shut up at this point, they're only hurting the future of the franchise, the future of Blood Origin, and every other thing that they intend to do. I don't think there's going to be much hope for it either way, but they're making their doom come all the sooner while saying these all these dumb things. Now, this thing that I'm going to be covering today is is 100% non-confirmed. It's supposedly from an insider document, but we can't confirm it at this point. It does contain some really interesting pieces of information that could make sense and seem to be in an attempt to begin a cancel culture mob against Henry Cavill. Again, no way to confirm whether or not this is true, but they're twisting things that are actually positives about Henry Cavill, caring about the source material and other things like that, and making some sort of sexist QAnon argument about why he's such a terrible person and Netflix wanted him gone. And it's just really baffling to see an insider information like this. Again, can't confirm it. Take this with a massive grain of salt. I just want to talk about this from the speculation point of view and think, hey, the writers, they seem to be coming at this perspective from the other stuff that we've heard about. So maybe this is 100% true. But let's jump right into this document. Now, this was shared by this Twitter user using Renfi as a profile picture, but it's getting a ton of traction. This person really doesn't have that many followers, about 700, but it's getting insane interaction at this point. So people are reacting to it. That's why I decided to bring it up. I normally don't like to talk about stuff like this, but this is getting enough dispersion in the Witcher fandom that I decided I at least needed to address this supposed document. I think this is true. Personally, I believe this is the perspective. Whether or not this actual document is true, the mentality behind it, I believe, is an accurate depiction of what happens behind the scenes at Netflix's The Witcher, taking into account all the other information that we have about the behind the scenes of that show. But jumping into it, says, I recently got a message and someone's like, hey, do you know what really went down with Henry Cavill? And I was like, sure. So let me just read it. It begins. At the beginning of the show, Henry was good to work with. Yeah, he's a very professional dude. We've seen that in a lot of his different interviews. It's very professional. A lot of unusual demands that made people feel like he wasn't really a team player, but that's not unusual for a big star. And I'm 100% sure that those unusual demands were story related because that's the thing that other people have said from the other actors involved, the showrunners, the other writers. It's like, hey, he's always calling us out. He's always acting like an encyclopedia for Witcher lore. So I think that's what they're coming from is like, oh, he's not a team player because he wants the source material to be accurately depicted. That again, speculation on speculation at that point. Though in TV, it usually doesn't happen until the second season, but in seasons two and three, something shifted and he really became impossible for women to work with, which is actually a big problem. Now, the argument that this person is going to take is completely insane. There's a lot of women working at the behind the scenes of The Witcher, and so because he stood up against two power, it must just be because there's women involved that it's a problem. No, they're bastardizing the source material, and he cares about the source material. It doesn't matter if it's, matter if it's a man or a woman. He just cares about the source material. Acting like it's some sort of sexist thing to stand up to a female director is insane. That's an insane perspective to take. No, equality. Women directors can get called out for doing shit just as much as men directors. Same with female writers and male writers. And so they're just saying it's sexist. There's a lot of women on the set. If he was going to stand up to anyone, it's likely going to be a woman considering the demographics of the behind the scenes there. But even worse, because the showrunner is a woman. So this person is saying, oh, yeah, he should not have said anything against the female showrunner. The fact that it's a female showrunner meant that he had to just bow his head and do whatever she wanted. That is a sexist approach. That is a very sexist approach. This stuff, this section, is why I believe this document may very well be true. He would try to overthrow her and try to get the changes made last minute across the board without her knowledge. I don't believe it's without her knowledge. But yes, we have instances of him making changes or lobbying for changes. Specifically, the famous one is the Roach Death scene where he took a speech from the book to kind of make it a sad, somber moment rather than a joke like she originally wanted. Yeah, he should have stood up to that just like he did. It's not because... He's, she's a woman that he felt comfortable doing that, which if you know anything about showrunning is completely fucked. The show, that's so funny. The showrunner has to sign off on every minuscule detail down to the buttons on the costume. Female writers and the directors were suddenly ignored on set, unable to do their jobs. He's ignoring everyone. If he is ignoring anyone because he's in a terrible situation, he hates what he's doing, and I don't blame him for this. Just the fact that there's a lot of female crew members on set doesn't make it a sexist deal. It's just, hey, I hate what you're doing. I'm having trouble being here, and I want to leave as soon as I can. Nothing to do with their genitalia. 
Stop making sexist arguments out of mundane interactions between people. Every department head was complaining. He started making comments. It wasn't a sexual thing. He wasn't grabbing anyone or being lewd, but it was disrespectful and toxic all the time. He was disrespectful, sure, maybe. I don't believe that he's a very professional man, but again, we don't know everything about celebrity. So let's say I take the disrespectful thing as being true. He has good motivations for being that, as we've established previously, and he wasn't being inappropriate. So what makes you think it had anything to do with them being a woman? It actually seems like it has everything to do with them bastardizing the source material. Again, an example of them making some sort of sexism argument with no basis in reality or fact. He's deeply addicted to video games to the point where it was like working with any other addict. The hell? That's a weird... Well, okay. He was distracted, he was late, he was obsessive, and a lot of people think that the misogyny came from the gamer world. Oh, the guy plays video games, and he's like, b not listening to the showrunner who's bastardizing his favorite franchise? He must be a misogynist from the gamer world! That is a bound and leap in insanity logic. Video game bro language is like how you talk to coworkers and he wouldn't stop. So he, he was being casual with people when he wasn't being professional. I still don't see anything actually wrong with what they're saying that he physically did. Their extrapolations from what these actions mean is insane and I 100% disagree with it. But the actual actions that he made seem completely within reasonable behavior considering everything involved. Someone on the show compared it to watching get brainwashed by QAnon. You're standing up for a franchise you love against a showrunner who's completely bastardizing it, so not only are you a sexist gamer bro, but somehow it's equivalent to being radicalized by QAnon? What is this clown world that this individual lives in? Again, this might be fake. This might be fake. But this is the type of mentality we've seen out of Hollywood time and time again. So it's completely believable that this is true. If it's a fake, it's a very, very good fake. Like his whole personality shifted. Even his disrespect escalated. That's just him getting more and more upset with the way that things are running, leading to his eventual departure. So yes, of course, it's going to escalate because he's seen the direction the show is going progressively in the wrong direction for the show, for the franchise that he loves so very much. None of this is untoward at all things considered, considering the active mocking of the source material, the active dis bastardization that these showrunners and these female directors were perpetrating on the Witcher franchise. He would rewrite scenes without even alerting the other actors in the scene until it was time to shoot. I don't believe that at all. He's too professional to do that. But again, we don't know everything about actors unless we see proof of it. I'm not going to believe something that insane out there. He decided he didn't want any romantic scenes at all. No kissing, no shirtless scene, etc. I don't believe that at all because, again, he's very invested in the source material and the source material is very erotic at times. He knows that. And so by constantly trying to get more accurate to the source material, more accurate to the video games, he would be asking for more of these scenes, in my opinion. He wanted complete control of the storyline but really had no idea of the limitations of the TV structure, budget, etc. So he's actually going on to produce another TV show, so apparently other people think he's good enough to do it with the Warhammer 40k series, he was trying to push the storylines in a more positive, lore accurate direction. Again, they're making all sorts of assumptions about someone who's just trying to make an accurate source material with some creative integrity in it. And that's some sort of insane narrative that they're building around him at this point. He formed a weird alliance with one writer who was also a gamer who eventually got fired after multiple HR complaints were made. I wonder if they're trying to backpedal and disgrace Bodubeo in retrospect to kind of discredit his comments about mocking the source material. I wonder if that's what they're referring to here. And after that writer left, Henry did anything he could to hold up production and cause problems. Eventually, Top Brass at Netflix was tired of him costing money with delays in HR investigations. This is, this is insane. If this stuff were true, we would have heard about stuff like this. This is too far, these accusations in this third paragraph. They've taken things too far. They're making exaggerated assumptions based on reasonable actions, and now they're just straight up accusing him of HR violations. This is an insane situation. This third paragraph, I think, is the one that makes me disbelieve the reality of this insider information the most, but I can still see someone trying to make this narrative nonetheless. And the showrunner was asked to construct a potential exit for him. Netflix reached out to him personally, and he was given one file and a warning and violated that warning with an email he sent to the entire writing staff right after that meeting. That was it. All right. If this insider is true, if Netflix decides to verify or whatnot, we need that email. That's, that's going to be the proving factor because if it was just, hey, I was in a meeting, 
and some things came up. I still think we need to accurately adapt the source material and that's not really going to change, but I'm going to be more professional about it. If that's the violation, that's the only thing that I can see Henry Cavill actually doing. So is that really that bad? He wanted to leave and they wanted him to leave. So whatever they have to say to justify firing him is with all within the realm of possibility at this point. Someone who just tries to make a good story accurate to the source material is a villain in modern day Hollywood. And this is the beginning of a cancel culture mob sent against him to shame him and others like him from ever standing up against to anyone who is bastardizing source material, bastardizing beloved franchises. Everything that he actually did in these first two paragraphs is just someone who's standing up to a heinous work environment that hates the source material that they're adapting. None of that is wrong. And then the third paragraph just goes off the rails in sanity levels. And I, I still support Henry Cavill through all this. He's an actual fan and we need more fans like him in Hollywood to defend against the horrific bastardizations perpetuated by people like Lauren Histridge. It has nothing to do with the fact that he, she's a woman that Henry Cavill stood up to her. It was had 100% to do with the decisions that she made. That is equality at its finest. You're criticized for your decisions, not for your genitalia. Hey, equality's knocking and it's a bitch. But anyway, that's all I have for today. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Anon. Hey, yo, are you feeling what I'm doing up in here? Oh, I know you are. Do you miss all the good compelling stories that we used to get back in Hollywood that they ain't putting down no more. Oh, oh, I know you missing it. So check out my book series, Odyssey of a Phoenix, a mythological epic about philosophy, morality, and modern day mental illness issues, baby. Book one, Down in Flames. Book two, Apocalypse Then. These are currently on sale. What are you waiting for? Get your hands on them. And we got book three, Kill the Dark, is coming down the pipeline. Just wait for all the good stuff that's dropping. You ain't gonna be disappointed, fam.